Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Jocelyn Brown, the Queen of Soul, R and B, <laughs> Gospel and Dance. <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. My pleasure as well too. <laughs> You're about to complete a three night sold out stint here at the Jazz Cafe. Yes. How's it uh, how the first couple of days gone? Beautiful. Just beautiful. I couldn't be more happy, you know. And um, the first night was not a whole packed out night, but it was a packed night, you know. Yeah, there were yeah. people upstairs and downstairs and it was just so wonderful to feel them, you know, feel the folks and their vibration and their love and respect. I was, I was in heaven. Fantastic. Um, do you still get the butterflies in the summer before every you call day, the performance? Every day, every time, it's no question. I'm getting, the, I'm there now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not letting you see that right now because we're talking, you know, and I don't go there. I'm not thinking about the show, but uh huh. By the time I get ready to get on that stage, I'm, I'm really a wreck. Yeah, I admit it helps though. Oh, it, yeah. yeah, because you don't have a choice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's the band lineup at the moment then? Oh, when you say band lineup, what do you mean? I'm sorry. The, uh, yeah, behind you on stage. Oh, who's on stage yeah. with me? I have a Velra Bailey, who is my MD. I have uh, Andrew Smith, who is the guitar player. I have Emlyn, I feel like Emlyn's last name, who's played keyboards. And I have Joey, who's playing um, drums. And then I have three background singers, and that's it. Fantastic. Okay. No, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. But um, you had a pretty varied career, even prior to recording your debut album, singing on uh, music, inner life, discotheques, and the sex olettes, your own bad girl, she, the list goes on. <laughs> what, what made it right in 1984 to release your, your debut album? To be very honest with you, Marco, I was going through a very serious trial and tribulation at that time because I had been blacklisted by a producer who wanted me to sign with the label that I refused to sign with. And uh, they allowed me to know that they refused to allow me to be uh, signed to anybody else because I had an inducement letter that had been signed by the producer for the project. So that led me to be involved, but yeah, yeah. I still had to sign the paper in order to be committed, and I didn't do that. So. It put me in a real strange position of not being able to be Jocelyn Brown with the products that I was doing. I had to come out completely and disassociate myself with labels and anything and do it on my own. You know, establish my own label, establish my own situation and, and distribution and go into the business. And it was very painful because somebody else's guy was made out of that, you know. Mm -hmm. That was the, the next step in my life, in my career. Um, I mean, but since your debut, One From The Heart, how would you describe your, your musical journey? I would describe it like, you know, I've had a chance to meet so many different people from various different uh, genres in the business, the music business. Quincy Jones, you know, um, uh, George Benson, Aretha Franklin, um, Teddy Pendergrass, you know, uh, and we can just go on and on because so many of them were in various, various different positions and I was a background singer or I was a step out girl, you know, and I had a chance to see those worlds. and That allowed me to be able to be uh, diverse. I could do different things, you know, and especially singing lead, you know, that was a wonderful thing for me. It was a really nice opening journey for me to be able to establish my own road in the business. Yeah, no, absolutely. You famously did the vocals for The Power by Snap. Yes. And there was a litigation over that. That's all sorted now, is it? No, it's not. Still not? It's still not Has that sort of tainted your view of the song, your feelings for no. that song? No. I mean, it, the song is a song. It has nothing to do with me. Yeah, it's yeah. the people that were behind it, you know, and I'm not upset with them either. I feel for them because I, no matter how long you take to make, to change this and make it right, it will always be incorrect in your life, you know, for them, yeah, for no, me. No. So I feel for them. <laughs> but your performance is always high energy, upbeat. You seem to give your whole self, you yes. know, when you're in the performance. How would you describe the feeling that you get on singing live on stage? Same thing, you know, folks, be, they, they want to hear them songs, you know, they want to hear <laughs> what I sang, what I sounded like, you know, where it came from. And, and the energy is just over the top. It's just beautiful. It's such a cushion. You know, even if you're hoarse, you know, the cushion is still there because they sing all the songs just about. Yeah, no, So it kind of true. saves you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm grateful. Well, when can we look forward to some uh, new material? Oh, well, we're doing that now. I have an yeah. album that I did with Soul Persona, yeah. and uh, we're talking about trying to release that this summer. 
and uh, I'm working on a TV show right now, you know, uh, yes, yeah, yes. food and music, and uh, making it more intimate, you know, than so studio orientated. It's going to be a lot different. I hope people like it because I'm, I'm, Misha Paris is going to be on there with me. Yeah, well, what's the concept of the show? How, how good is it? Well, the thing is, is that, you know, all my buddies in the music business, they cook. They be on stage oh, yes. singing and performing and everything, but they when they close that door to the stage and go home, they cook. They enjoy life like everybody else. And no one understands that. No one sees that. And no mm -hmm. one knows that that happens, you know. That, you know, you you actually go in the house and you take a shower, you cook, you vacuum, and you wash the floor, you wash your clothes. I mean, they don't believe that you're in that world because they think you either have maids or butlers or something like that. They don't never think about, you might have a family of your own and you're in that. The lights is only when we're on stage. It's not when we're home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's that kind of a concept. Intimate, very intimate, and, and very... Um, and very open and free. Yeah, cool. so what's it called again? It's called Jocelyn's Kitchen. Ah, very nice. 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 When's it going to end? We're not sure yet. We're getting. A, we're looking for a buyer right now, and uh, it's being mixed down and edited and, and edited and stuff. And so we're waiting for the final edits to come in. Fantastic. Look forward to that. Um, you, you've been singing since you were three years old. Yes. Um, do you ever foresee a time that you think that's this enough? Is it? I'm gonna. I'm gonna quit now. No, I mean, until God says so, you know? Good, good. That's what you wanted to hear. <laughs> um, what's been your, do you think, throughout your career, your most productive musical period? I think the most productive music was when I came here in 19, and I came in 89, but it started really thumping off around 1991, you know, and I started really mm -hmm. working with different, diver different producers here and different producers in Europe, you know, and... Um, that's when it really started kicking up. I mean, I had my career in America and all that kind of stuff when I was yeah, doing yeah. My, my tours and I, you know, I, I worked with different DJs over there as well, Jelly Bean, um, Louis Vega, you know, and uh, Todd Terry, and that kind of stopped there. But when I got over here, it just went berserk, you know, <laughs> European producers, you know, producers out of Germany, producers out of Sweden, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. In Switzerland, and, and it was like, yes, <clears throat> just being able to change up and, and listen to somebody else say, well, I'd like to hear you sound like this, you know, and give me that. And it's like, okay, so I got to step out of this and do that. Okay, great. Because when I did jingles, I didn't know that jingles was a song. I just thought it was a jingle. You know, you just sing it yeah. and you sing little small spots and that was it. Uh-uh. It's a whole song. Oh, well, then they just condense it. Beginning. Middle, oh, wow, it's just it's and, a very and, small song. That's right. <laughs> 30 seconds, 60 <laughs> seconds, you know, so, but you got to do a whole song in that, in that amount of time. So you learn, you know, and yeah, I, yeah. I've been very blessed being here. So this is where my whole, everything kicked off over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, as I said, you work with many countless DJs, artists, Quincy Jones, Michael Jackson, Incognito, Luca Vandross, John <laughs> Lennon, Beth Midler, Culture Club, George Benson, <laughs> um, the list goes on and on. But who would be on your wish list for, for future projects, collaborations? Russell Watson. Um, possibly get my hands on, I would love to do something with George Benson again, it would be fantastic, but I like to work with other people like, uh, um, Elton John, I like to, work, you know, work with, um, Paul McCartney, I'd love to, you know, and, um, I love to work with a couple of other young, some young guys that's coming into the business and has a great knack for the beat and the grooves, but just don't know how to get in contact with me because they want to hear me sing it, you know. Yeah, I like yeah. to work with that kind. I like to work with the young people. That's yeah. yeah, that's okay. <laughs> um, who are your inspirations then, or have been throughout your, your career? Well, Marco, you know, I was raised with a musical family, so my mother was, she sounded like, between Sarah Vaughan and, um, Sarah Vaughan and, um, there's another one. Can't remember her name right now. Sarah Vaughan and, I can't remember her name right now, but my mother's voice was like that. She was incredible. And, uh, being a youngster and knowing that your mom's, and realizing your mother has that kind of voice, 
I used to be like a little kid. Yeah, well, I was a little kid. Was <laughs> standing on the side while she'd be singing and cooking, you know, and she'd be cooking and singing or scrubbing the floor and cook and singing. And or my mother was a great seamstress, so she could sew and be singing. I mean, so I, I was around it all the time, you know. So my mother was a great inspiration to me. It's genetic. Yeah, it's <laughs> genetic. But I didn't know that, you know, because she had to tell me, baby, don't sing like this. Sing like this, you know. <laughs> so she had to change me up some, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone impressing you on this sort of current musical scene at the moment? Anyone impressing me on the music scene right now? Um, it's really kind of hard for me to say because I'm an old schooler. And I like the old school folk, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I love to see a resurrection of all the soul singers to come back. So it's really not no one that I particularly love at this moment. I respect them, you know. The hip hop kids are just the hip hop kids, you know, Beyonce and all them. That's to me hip hop, Mary J. Blige and all that. They've taken away from our R&B signature stuff and changed it into something else and calling that R&B yeah, yeah. and soul, which is way beyond me, so there's really no one that I can, I mean I respect them all, please don't get me wrong, because they have all made a name for themselves, Oops. and made a great sound for themselves, but it's their sound, you know, and I'm not part of that league, they've never called me and said, would you come in and work with us, you know, they've never done anything, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, maybe I'm too old for the agenda, but it's all no, good, no, no. you know what I'm saying, but you know, I'm just not there in that, and if I was to be called in to, to work with them, I'd love to, because I'd love to see what they would want me to do. You know, yeah, where no, I've no, come absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But you said that just about the sort of reality TV show, you mean you did just the two of us from uh, pop star to opera star. You know, would you ever consider sort of celebrity big brother, I'm a yeah. celebrity, get me out of here, is that's too much twenty four hour a day pressure? No, that's that's too invasive. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. too invasive and I'm a private woman. I'm very private with my life and I just believe that people aren't supposed to know but so much. Yeah, unless no, you're I, my I agree. friend, you know, unless you yeah, know me yeah. personally, but other than that, mm -mm. But you're, you're a deeply religious woman as well, in a world that sort of, you know, seems to be losing ground, you know, religion seems to be losing ground by many sort of youngsters in a way. How do you, how do you keep your faith strong anyway, personally? My God, is, he's everything. I mean, he's been everything all my life. I was raised with him, so, you know, I know that all that I have and all that I will ever be is because he's blessed me and given me a great gift. Some people don't believe, some people don't have that kind of faith. I, I, I understand, but I was raised in it. And I've seen God move in my life. I've made, seen him do miracles. You know, I've got a miracle with my little sister right now who was beaten cancer for the third time, you understand? But that's, that's our faith. And I believe and I trust him. And I trust God with everything. I, I don't care, I trust him. And I know he won't fail me. And he's never come back on his word. Never, ever, ever. God's never wrenched on me or stood me up <laughs> or made me feel abandoned. You know what I'm saying? So I believe that this business, if you don't have faith, if you don't have a, a higher power that you deal with or I have a, 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 you know, some kind of medium that you deal with so that you can get away from this business when you need to get away from it and, and look at it through another set of eyes, you know, through spiritual eyes so that you can understand what your barriers are, I think you, you'll be lost. Because this business can be a crocodile. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. You know, hey, well, that's a, definitely a comfort. So, what's it? What's in store for 2014 then? To just generally? continue doing great music and singing and working hard and staying as close as I can with my children and you know just doing great music. I just want to do more great music and sing songs that touch people's lives like they touch mine. You know and. That's what 2014 and on is going to be for me. You know, you know, I just lost my good friend Oliver Cheatham. And he was very close to me. We were together for over 20 years, you know, as friends, you know. And my heart is aching inside. I mean, I'm not talking too much about it because every time I start, I can start welling up. But I, we lost him last Thursday in the middle of, the, of his sleep. He died in his sleep, you know. I mean, it's a wonderful way to go, but it's also a, a tragic way to go because. If I just talk to you a little while ago, then all of a sudden I'll never talk to you again, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I look at all of this as being this only journey that we're on, you know, and my faith keeps me stable. Because <laughs> I know that God doesn't do anything for nothing, it's always for something. You know, so pay attention, 
look ahead of yourself, you know. I'm getting older, and I know that, you know, the body doesn't stay young. It goes old with you, so, you know, we've got to move it together. But uh, I look forward to God, you know, showing me, and I look forward to the, the sweetness of life and its beauty and, and, and its splendor to come and give me more of positive energy and positive strength to go further. And my biggest thing is that I want to get kids. I want to work with children for them to sing and for them to understand what it is to sing. Yeah, and that pass on the uh, knowledge yes, of the world. Yeah. Indeed. And uh, still enjoying living in London? Oh my God. <laughs> it's almost like when I go back to America, I'm in a foreign place. It really feels like that now. My kids say, Mom, come on, let's go. I mean, I remember where we always go and all that kind of stuff. It's just, I'm not there anymore. I'm just not physically there anymore. And uh, the joy of America for me was all my peers singing and doing their things and being able to survive. And unfortunately, that's not the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'd rather for my children to come here than for me to go home. But, you know, well, we can't take their flight, those flights, Mom. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm really looking forward to tonight. Oh. But um, if you had to sort of pick three tracks that would sort of sum Jocelyn Brown up sort of your whole career, what, what three would you choose from your... From my, from your, yeah, my, from your my moment of my life is one. Um, ain't a mountain high enough, you know. Definitely somebody else's guy. Because it is, it's a woman's It's a woman and a man's song. But because I sang it and wrote it, it's more yeah, of yeah, a woman's of thing, you know. So those three songs would stand out the most for me because they all are songs of moving ahead, getting better, having great things added to you, you know, and knowing that something's better waiting for you. So fantastic. Anything else you'd like to say to me and news watchers? Thank you so much for being so supportive of my career and being there for me. I really, really, really appreciate it and I have such gratitude for all these years of folks still being right there. You know, and hopefully for whatever God's got left for us to do, we'll be together some more. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, Can't thank wait. you. <laughs> um, uh, Rocco told me, he said, oh, you're going to love Marco. He's great. He's <laughs> great at you. I said, okay, no problem. When you see me tonight, I'll be bumping around down the front somewhere. No worries, baby. Just go right on the bunk because everybody else is going to be, yeah, what's going on? <laughs>